Hey, Ali. Hi, Frank. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Thank you. Oh, yes. let, me, let me turn off the comments. So, and we are waiting some, uh, for some other people to join us. So it's going to be like uh, in one or two minutes. So, okay. so we see you very clear. So how's everything? Everything's pretty good. I was trying to get this thing. <laughs> so you're having trouble with your camera, right? No, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to get it in the right angle. So you're just adjusting it. Yeah. So we just, we're just seeing your, yeah, that's, that's much better. So okay. <laughs> that, that's fine. So how's it going today? How are you, Frank? So we are all I'm locked good. down in our houses. So. What's that? We are all locked down. Yes, it's a, it's a lockdown situation. We're, we're live now, Ali? Yes, right now we're okay. live. Right. So everybody's Great. watching us. <laughs> right. Can you... Oh, so you, you can see the count of how many people are on, right? Yes. Now we have 33 active people, so which is going to be different in different times. So people come and go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have... Right now we have 34 people. So I'm going to... 36. So I'm going to say hi to everyone. And I'm going to give uh, the platform to you so you can hi and... I don't know, whatever you want to say. And then and then I'm going to start. Okay. okay. Don't you want to say hi? Yes. Hey, everybody. I want to thank everyone for uh, for joining in. That's, you know, in, in these crazy times, it's, uh, it's great to use this technology so that we can remain connected. So I'm thrilled about that. I'm thrilled that Ali um, has me on for a guest. It's, uh, it's absolutely an honor to be around a um, Hasselblad master. So thank, um, you. thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure for me, uh, for, for, for all of you, I, I don't know, for, but for all of you who doesn't know Frank, so Frank is one of the top notch representatives or agents in New York City, and he helped so many photographers in the past 30 years to promote their projects and their works all around the world, with, working with different companies, and um, um, but a great consultant in the world of photography, so Thank you, Frank, for joining me and my audiences and your audiences uh, today. So there are lots of questions that today we are going to. Our topic is the art of business in photography. And before I jump in into the middle of our topic, so uh, I'm going to start it with a very, very, uh, at least for me, it's a very beautiful advice from you. Uh, Frank and I met each other. At, it was four years ago, and it was uh, in the first meeting. So it's interesting that uh, it wasn't even, uh, so like 10 minutes, you told me that I'm going to give you a piece of advice and if you can handle it so we can move forward or you can work in New York. But if you don't, it's better for you to go, go back. Really? And it was that um, this is New York. I, I, and, and everybody, I'm just saying the polite version. I'm just saying the polite version. So, and Frank told me, this is New York. And you are nothing. You're going to receive lots of rejections. <laughs> and you have to figure it out that how you want to go, how you want to go uh, forward and uh, how you want to promote yourself as a photographer who wants to stand out. And um, that, was, that was my first uh, very, very sharp. Uh, it was my very sharp memory with Frank, which he was so honest. He was so sharp. I never talked about that feeling with Frank uh, till now, but he was so sharp. I get shocked, but it was it was uh, one of the. I mean, it, it was so true. I mean, Frank, uh, uh, let me first you the first. Let me ask you the first question. Well, and first I want to say. First I want to say I. I'm sure I never said you're nothing. I'm sure I didn't say that. <laughs> I may have said no, no, there's let, a lot of yeah, people no, no, around. No, it wasn't. It and, wasn't and, like. No, I cannot say okay. the exact word. I, 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 I cannot say the exact word. But it was, it was some, it was that's in the world of photography because there are lots of big photographers. Yeah. Yeah. So you still, nobody doesn't know you. So that was, that was the meaning. I mean, the actual meaning is this, you're nothing. I mean, you should find that's, that's the real, I mean, it was the real um, perspective. Yeah, and I yeah. thank you about that, honestly. I, I thank you. So when I said uh, you told me you're nothing, I didn't mean that you wanted to. It, it wasn't. It was. It was okay. uh, non-destructive advice. It was a non-destructive advice. Okay. So uh, yes, um, but but I cannot say the word that you. <laughs> Fucking that, nothing. That. 
<laughs> That's the point. Okay. So uh, let me give you, uh, let me uh, ask you the first question, uh, Frank. What is the role of an agent? Okay. So the, again, thank you for having me. Uh, I just want to say uh, to the audience that for me, I've always represented photographers and everything I have in my life, you have a modest house. I put two kids through college. It's all from working with photographers. So I have the utmost respect for what you guys do and that you've mastered this craft um, is a gift. So for me, <laughs> I'm, o I'm always about giving back to all of you. So my, uh, my, uh, my email is always open to any one of you. So what does a rep do? The rep here in New York or anywhere is it's about getting business for photographers. Now, the market is, is in such a place where there are so many more photographers than there are reps, right? So that, that's sort of the foundation because everybody in their sister is a photographer, right? And so many are terrific, absolutely terrific photographers. There isn't like a huge discrepancy between terrific photographers and not so terrific. There's just a lot of really good photographers, whether you're in Tehran, Berlin, New York, Chicago, LA, wherever. There's a lot of photographers. So the job of the rep is to match a photographer's style with what we perceive to be a client's need, right? So that's really the job, that we have connections with particular ad agencies that say, need a car photographer, need a lifestyle photographer, need a great retoucher, what, a, a CGI, a drone photographer, whatever it is, and you try to match that up, right? And it isn't that, you know, um, that the rep has the answer. The rep may have the connection. But again, recognizing that there's so many photographers and so many reps that the end buyer, which is the ad agency or the art producer, is also bombarded by all of these people trying to reach them. So the key is, is having a rep that can get you in. And get, getting you in is simply l making or asking the art producer to go to your website, come to my website, and see this wonderful work. That's really the piece of it. And then there's estimating and negotiating and all of the uh, social piece of the relationship, but generally that's what a rep does. And the rep also guides, helps guide the photographer in getting new work all the time, doing the social piece of it as well. And the, the one piece that everyone really has to watch out for is thinking that the rep is the answer. But you get a rep and bam, all the jobs are coming. It doesn't work that way. It clearly, clearly doesn't because Again, there are so many terrific photographers. And if you think of it this way, how could you imagine that you're relying on your entire livelihood on another person? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. You've got to be in the trenches as well. You have to build relationships, whether it's with an art gallery, an ad agency, newspapers, magazines, television, wherever you think your images could go. That's part of the job, as I've told you forever, Ali, right? That you have to network and it takes time and it takes due diligence and you've got to be dedicated as you are to the craft of photography. You have to be dedicated to the promotion of what you do. And, that, and, and when I say that, I mean, always being on Instagram, always tweeting, you know, let people see your style, right? Just as one example. Right? I mean, there's plenty of places to promote yourself that cost a lot of money, that don't cost a lot of money, but you have to be dedicated to doing it. That is really the key. If you're not, somebody else is filling that void because all these people that you're trying to reach, they're inundated with content. And how are you going to break through? If you break through by having great content yourself. So that's, you know, that's, that's so, so there are lots of that. That's great. But there are lots of questions. You know, so you give us a very, I mean, uh, huge perspective on how a photographer should work, think, live. You talked about the website. 
about, you talked about the uh, promotion, how to make the connections. I mean, uh, you told me once and I heard from different people too that sometimes, sometimes it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. So, to, to a certain degree, you still have to have terrific work. But, you know, listen, I want, you know, who doesn't want to work with someone that they know, that they like, that's inspiring, right? I mean, we all want to work with that, with that photographer, right? We don't, you know, but, you know, we also want to work with someone who's just a lot of fun, who's nice, you know, that, that but you got to have great work. That's, see, that, that's really the foundation. You got to do terrific work. Now, what else can you bring? What else can you bring to that relationship? And, and here's another thing I use all the time, creative separation. How do you separate yourself from all the other photographers, right? That's really the key. No matter what city you're in, around the world, if you're in Paris and you're a terrific photographer, there's tons of terrific photographers in Paris. How do you separate yourself out? And there's different ways to do it, but that's really the key. Why are they gonna call you? So, um... Frank, just it's it's uh, yeah, you mentioned lots of good stuff here, uh, but uh, it came to my mind. Okay, so I'm a good photographer. Okay, so how can how can I find an agent? How can I uh, tell uh, to an ad agency that hey guys, I'm out there, so just give me the jobs. So for instance, if someone wants to work uh, with you, imagine like. A, any any rep so in as you mentioned so it might be different in other parts of the world i mean the, i know at least in my um, hometown so the role of rep and agent is not that clear like the way that we have here in the united states or in new york at least or any, or any other states in yeah. you know in america so or um, def, uh, i mean uh, in different parts of the world maybe africa asia east asia i don't know so uh, how you can find an agent. So do you email them? Do you, and, and as you mentioned, there are lots of great photographers. So, so how is going to be, how, how you can make that connection? Okay. So how, how do you get the attention, right? In, in this world, in buzzing, in buzzing around, how do you get the attention of the rep, right? So you can get the attention by winning competitions. That's a good point. Connecting that, connecting with them on Instagram and tweeting letting them know that you're doing this, letting, you know, let people see part of who you are. There's, there's a uh, photographer, Chris, um, Chip Simmons, and he's on um, Instagram all the time. Does this over the top lighting, really terrific work, but it's, it's not, it's not something that, not somebody that I would want to represent just because it doesn't fit with the people I know, but I know what he does, right? He's made a mark just by being out there. David Arkey is another person, terrific photographer, does, does works with um, x-rays. He does x-rays of different products and you see inside, he tells a story of what's in somebody's pocketbook or what's in somebody's hip, you know, a variety of things. So it's, it's David um, A-R-K-Y, just, just as an example. So what you need to do is you need to garnish the attention of a rep. Now, the way to do that, is, is, there's a number of ways. Everyone has a list of the reps, right? Go to the rep's website. And a lot of, I mean, I get emails all the time looking for a rep, looking for a rep. It's bullshit, right? Like they should really know more about you so that they're not just sending this blanket. I need a rep, you know, are you interested? And that doesn't work. You need as a photographer to go <clears throat> to this rep and realize, you know what? I'm not a good fit here. They do fashion, you don't do fashion. You go to another one, and it's the same thing that goes with galleries, right? You go to the rep site or you go to the gallery, do I fit in this mix of photographers or artists in the gallery space? So you look at it and say, you know what? They don't have anyone who does drone photography. And I'm a great drone photographer. There's a fit. Right. Or you're a still life person and they already have a still life guy, but who does something completely different from you. That could be a nice fit, even though there's two still life guys there's there's different styles. 
Same thing with fashion, lifestyle. So it's first thing you have to do is, do I fit with that rep? And then when you reach out to that rep, you're reaching out with a little bit of intelligence. I see that you have this person. I see that you have this person. Take a look at my website if you would. And it, all, it, it says to me, you've done some research. You've really taken the time to see that I could fit there instead of just throwing it out. And in, in your email, I've just won this competition. I've just been in communication arts. I just shot this campaign. You know, tell people what you're doing and, and make it personable, right? I mean, you really have to do that. Um, and, you know, it, it's noticing what's going on in the industry. So now you have a conversation with a rep. The rep looks at you first as a photographer. And while they're on the phone with you, they're going to go to the website and say, oh, yeah, look at his work is great. Okay, so he's another great photographer. Now, what about the business piece of this? You know, do you know what's going on in the industry? What accounts are moving here? Hasselblad just left Ogilvy. Coca-Cola just left Y&R. These kinds of things so that you're on the pulse of what's going on. So that rep is saying, this person, she's a businesswoman. She wants to make money, create great work, and she's someone that's respectful. That, so, so that's a nice foundation to start with versus, hey, how you doing? Rep me. Oh, right. You know, and, the, and the, uh, you mentioned that's asking, but you mentioned a very good point here uh, about the websites. So, um, as as a rep, do you work with a photographer who doesn't have website? Or you just follow the on the on, Ollie, or you just Ollie, follow the Ali Ali You gotta have a website, Ali. That's right. That's if, if, if you don't have a website, you know it's like a car without wheels. I mean, it's just you know like that's the dark ages. Because some photographers think that if they just put their images on Instagram or they just put their images on Facebook so they can get jobs. But all the time I tell them that if you don't have a website, a personal website that people can go and see your projects so uh, they don't see you as a serious person. Right. They don't see you as that you have no intention to move forward or do uh, some great projects. So you're saying that the having website is the uh, most important key for a photographer to make connections and getting jobs right yes i mean you, ha you have to have a website it, it, it's just th that's just fundamental it's like back in the day you had to have a printed portfolio you just had to have it you know that's where we are today you must you must have a website just as a landing page that people can see your work and get us get a sense of you you know, the key is, is making the traffic come to your website. And that's how you use these other, these other platforms to make that happen. You see that person on Instagram enough or Twitter or wherever it is. Yeah. Let me see, let me see how she, let me see other work that she's done. And you, you, you learn about them. So yeah, a website is, is, you know, you is can't even have a conversation. It's fantastic. So uh, Frank, I have another question. So uh, I think that it might gonna be helpful. So, uh, how much is important for, I mean, it's, it's kind of a tricky question, but I, I need your, I mean, honest opinion about it, that how much is important that an artist have an agent or if they don't have a rep or an agent, is it still possible for them to move uh, on their successful trajectory? I mean, if you don't have a rep, so what do you think about this? I mean, having a rep or you don't have and you have your own signature and uh, the galleries or people comes to you. So is there any slight, uh, I mean, if you, you tell us about that. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny you asked that question because I was going to say to you, we're spending too much time on the rep. Okay. You know, the, the rep isn't the answer. You know, th that, that really is, the, it's about great work because great work will get you noticed working for terrific clients that produce beautiful layouts, whether it's magazines or beautiful ads, working with terrific clients. You know, that, that's really the piece because, yeah, I mean, in, in some regards, when you're working at, at, at different levels in your career, yeah, it's probably advantageous to have a rep who can do your negotiations. 
and if you're not comfortable in that space. But, you know, no, no, knowing that you're doing great work and you're exposing it, that's, you know, you have to do that whether you have a rep or not, right? And there's plenty of people like, like myself, I help people on a one-off basis. You know, they, they realize they're in over their head, Ogilvy calls, what do I do? How do I do it? You know, I have no idea. And there's always somebody there. That was that how we started. Yeah. I mean, like the, the, there's somebody there that will help you. You spoke to a few people. You realize that we connected better than the other ones, and, and that's fine. And, you know, you, you can navigate that, you know. But what got you first noticed at Ogilvy? Terrific work through Hasselblad, right? So, you know, it, it's that kind of thing. The, the emphasis on the rep. I think is a little bit misdirected when it's, you know, rep, 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 not the answer. It's the rep will come to you. I mean, that's where, that's where you want to be. You've got enough good work. You've got enough good contacts and, and you want to get to the next level. A rep is going to notice you, right? Instead of, you know, all the photographers crawling and scratching for the rep, for the rep, for the rep, you know, try to turn the tables the other way around. Let the reps become to you. And that's what happens, right? You get, you get a 10 page spread, in Vogue or, or Wire Magazine, whatever it is, and the reps will call you, right? But how did you get, you know, that editorial piece? You networked to get that editorial piece. So, you know, it, it, it's all these different pieces that you could be doing, but it's about producing great work as your foundation. And those other things will slowly slip in. I mean, I, I get calls from art producers who say to me, listen, I, I, we want to do this job with this, this woman. She's really terrific, but she has no business sense. No business sense. Rep her on this project. So Got I'll, it. I'll, I'll, I'll call so, her. So, so, you are saying, so you are saying that um, the, the, one of the key features of a rep is to uh, join these two force, I mean, ad agencies and the photographers who doesn't have a taste of business to making a good project. It's a perfect fit, right? I mean, that's exactly what happened with us. And, and I have a, you know, 20 other stories of a photographer who recognized they were in over their head. And, you know, and they didn't know what to do. And someone says, you know, call Frank Mayo. He'll help you, you know, navigate it. I get on the phone. I talk to the ad agency because we know the language. Yes. You, you speak the language. You, you understand, you know, the budgets and all of these other concerns. And you know how to put together the estimate. And you know you just bridge you bridge that divide, but it, it takes it takes the photographer, you know, um, the intellect the the intelligence to realize this is too big for me, or this is too complicated for me, or I'm not speaking the right language. I mean, uh, if I if I want to give an example to the people, that's me. So when when Ogilvy okay. reached out to me, so I didn't know that how should I respond to them. I mean. What can I do? I mean, I, I'm just a photographer. So when they asked me some, some questions, I didn't know the answers. And you were smart. You called APA. They gave you my name. Yes. A couple of other people. I just, I just saw them on the um, uh, photo wheel, the, the mm. photo wheel festival uh, in Brooklyn. Right. So Dylan, yeah. When I, yeah, I went to the APA. Um, it's a kind of interesting story. I, first, I went to Katrina Eisman. And she was on that time. She was she she SBA. at that time. She was the head of the School of Visual Arts, and she told me that you need to talk with the APA guys. Uh, and I and I went to them, and it was uh, yes, um, Mike Seto. Yeah, Mike Seto told me about you, and she said we cannot help you. You just you need to talk with a rep. So and they and they gave me a list of reps, but I was so lucky. I mean, guys, listen, Frank Mio is not just my rep. He is my family. I mean. Our relationship, yeah. it's different. Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's, that's really the point is that, you know, you, you, you have to build these relationships, right? I mean, and, and when you do, they become rock solid, right? They become absolutely rock solid. And then, then it could morph into something else. But, you know, the, um, the, whole, the, the whole rep piece there is... is, is it, it, it's always a moving, it's always a moving platform, right? Where, you know, do I need the rep? Does the rep need me? You know, and, and the other reality is, you know, there isn't so much work 
that, you know, like it, it, it isn't like every, the reps are getting called all the time. I need a photographer, I need a photographer, I need a photographer, I need, you know, from an ad agency. It's really hard work on both sides of the equation for the photographer and for the rep. I mean, the, you know, everyone really has to understand that, that the rep does, just doesn't open up a door and all these jobs come flowing through. I okay. mean, it's really tough. Yes. So, um, Frank, another question. So, um, how should a beginner start? I mean, I, I mean, if you want to give some piece of advice to beginners, so they are at the first steps of the uh, okay. photography. Marry rich. Marry a really <laughs> rich person. That would be the best way to start in a photography career. Whether you're straight, gay, trans, whatever it is, find a rich mate. Once you do that, that's a nice foundation. The way, the, the way to start is just keep on shooting. Get, make great work. You know, look at your competition. Look at, look at the people you admire, right? You know, you know that if you want to shoot cars, you've got to shoot as good as so-and-so. And if you want to do still life and you want to do fashion, you know, know every photograph that Helmut Newton has ever taken, right? Know everything about you know, Richard Avedon and, and aspire to be terrific, not copying their style, but recognizing these are the people that, you know, you admire, you have to reach for, right? And go to, and, and the beauty is you can go to everyone's website. You know, the competition can just be, you know, your professor, go look at that, you know, see the work that they're doing. And you, so you're starting out, man, that's where I want to be. I want to be and make that your goal. Right. And get yourself a team of terrific stylists, hair and makeup, make connections with modeling agencies, a prop maker, you know, learn that whole business. You know, here in New York and, and, and I assume in a lot of other big cities around the world, there's different organizations that you can join APA, ASMP. These places are great just to build a little bit of a network. And yeah, and within those places, yeah, there's shit where people complain too much and this, this but you're going to learn. And that's, you know, you're young, you're starting out, you got to be a sponge, soak it all in, learn, you know, keep on learning, but always be shooting. I mean, th that's, that's really, really the key because, I mean, I, I think this goes with every photographer, you know, you look at your work today, and then you look at your work six months later, and you look and say, how did I shoot that? That was terrible. Look how much better it is now, right? I mean, that's, that's sort of the... Um, you know, the metamorphosis that you go through of just keep on shooting, you're going to get better and better and better. And you're going to recognize it yourself. So for me, you know, for a young photographer, whenever you could assist somebody who's really good, do it. You know, you don't make a lot of money, but just keep on assisting. Be learn. An assistant. Yeah, learn, learn how to be I mean, I, I find photographers, you know, never even think of assisting. I mean, it's crazy. You got to, you know, you got to learn. And what you pick up, through, through the process of osmosis, how a photographer speaks to a client, how a photographer speaks to other assistants, how a photographer speaks to a director, uh, a hair and makeup person, a model, direction, all of those things, you need to understand that. You need to know how to do that in such a way that people say, I really love working with Ali, whether that's the client, whether that's your crew, whether that's the hair and makeup person, the model, you, you want people to walk away saying, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that shoot. You know, if you're a client, it's even better, right? I mean, those, those, I mean, it sounds like kumbaya, you know, everyone should love each other. And it's not always that way, but it should be. You know, okay. you have to treat people with respect, but you, you need to learn from the ground up. And I'm not saying being an assistant for 12 years, but, you know, gain some knowledge and you'll get to see how a successful f photographer handles him or herself. This is how they promote themselves. This is how they speak to clients. This is how they follow up. This is what a bill looks like. Putting together a bill that's professional, it matters. It matters a lot. I mean, the budget, the bills, the, the way of everything. negotiation, everything. The layout, you know, your typeface, the typeface you pick for your website, for your, um, for your bills, everything. And also see the mistakes that a studio makes. Because everyone makes mistakes. Yes. Right. Learn on somebody else's dime, then learn yeah. you're making your own mistakes. That's right. It. Like, That's right. And, and, and you see, you know what? 
I'm going to copy that, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that, but I love this. You know, so you start to pick these things up and that's invaluable. I mean, that, that's worth its weight in gold just to see how that person operates. So, uh, being okay. a, you know, starting out, be an assistant, learn. That's a very good point. I mean, lots of people think that they should start by their own, but at least being an assistant with a professional photographer for one or two years give you a lot to of... learn. Yeah, I'm yeah. not saying you, you know, and on the weekends, just keep on shooting, doing everything you want to do. But, you know, learn, learn, learn a little bit of the um, of the landscape so that you can, you know, you can fall right in and you know how to speak the language. You know, even that, just that of how to converse with a client and everything's not yo man and how the fuck are you and all this other stuff. You know, you got to speak professionally. Yes. Right? I mean, that, that's really important so that, you know, the clients, you know, so the ad agency says, I don't mind having this person in front of my clients. Right. Right. There's a big dynamic there. And you talk about the rep photographer relationship. I'm not going to take on somebody who, you know, doesn't speak, you know, um, in a professional manner. And the same thing for you guys. Don't take on a rep who is someone you really don't like. You know, who's sleazy or wh whatever, the, or flighty, you know, wh whatever it is, all those things matter. Okay. So um, that's, that was a good point, uh, Frank. So one, uh, one question, Frank, is it, uh, I have it on my, so there are lots of questions. I have it right now. So we passed 30 minutes. Um, is it possible? No, I mean, listen, did, Ali, did don't you worry have, about time. Oh, okay, good. So is it possible? Um, this is just a question that came to my mind. And I just saw that some of the some of our audiences asked about it. So is it possible for a photographer who do a job in his country, but still the ad agency is placed in another country? Imagine that someone is living in uh, United Arab Emirates or he's living in Qatar or I don't know, even uh, any other places, but getting the job from a company who is in the United States. Is it possible? It's absolutely possible it, it, because usually in, in, in a situation like that, if an ad agency is in Berlin and they want to shoot with a photographer in Paris, you're talking about a big client. Yes. Right. You're not talking about somebody who just wants to sell pencils. Right. No. You're, look, you, you're looking at a Nike. You're looking at, you know, a Ford Motor Company, Mercedes yes. Benz, something yeah. like that. They really want to work with this photographer. Yes, we are not Berlin. talking about the locals. We are talking about the right. So, for, from an international standpoint, yeah, it's very, so usually that that client, say it's Mercedes Benz, and their their ad agency in Berlin is say um, Young and Rubicam, for instance. Young and Rubicam is probably going to have an office everywhere in the world, in you know, in uh, Cape Town, in United Emirates, in Dubai. You know, they're going to have, it may not be a huge office, but they're going to have some office there. And so you'll probably end up working with that local office in Dubai, even though the, they end up ending up, or, or it started with Berlin for Mercedes-Benz, whatever. So, I mean, the world is kind of small that way. And, and they may want to shoot in these other places. Like for the longest time, we were always shooting in Africa because the, the talent was so cheap. Okay. Right. So everyone was running to to, um, to Johannesburg and Cape Town to shoot because you can get the models for free. Wow. Right. So everyone was doing it and, and the world just got smaller. So you'd be work You'd be working with an ad agency here in New York and they had an office in Cape Town. So you made the, you, they you know, they hired somebody there or they took the photographer from New York and flew them to Cape Town. And then you worked with the local office there. Got so, it. so, you know, the world, the world is really small that way. Um, it's, um, you know, it, it's not, it's not a deterrent in, in that, in that manner at all. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a good, so yeah, as soon as they have branches in other parts of parts of the world, so they can reach out to local photographers right. to do their job. Right. So you need, and that, and that's a really good point because you know, so many people get lost in, I got to get to Berlin. I got to get to Paris, New York, Chicago, LA, you know, you know, uh, Milan. You don't, you know, 
being these other, being, you know, being in Milan is like being in New York or being in Chicago. Just be the best photographer in Milan. And when someone's looking for a great fashion photographer, the world becomes like this. It's really tiny, right? They, they're going to find you. And if they want to use you because of your style, that's it. So when, you know, when people say, you know, I got to get to New York, it's okay to be in a smaller city like Atlanta or Chattanooga, right? Be the best photographer out of these smaller cities because your lifestyle is, 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 is cheaper, right? New York, Berlin, you know, Paris, it's so stinking expensive where, you know, and it's so tough. It's so tough. And you know, when you know, you're living in Atlanta, you know, go be the best still life photographer in Atlanta. You're going to win awards. You're going to you're going to work Instagram and tweet, and you know someone's going to reach out to you. You know we'd love to work with you. Where are you? Well, I'm in Atlanta. Great. We'll send the products there, or come to New York. Right. That's, that's you know, a good point. Without that overhead, the, the overhead of these big cities is crippling. Is absolutely crippling. So you so you shouldn't think that there's always a red carpet for you in New York or Paris or or London. So it's better for you, sometimes it's better for you to stay in your local city and be the yeah. best of your style. Be the, be, the, be the best in that small market and promote yourself globally. Got and that's what, you, that's what you could do with Instagram, with tweeting. Yes. Right, I mean, that, the world has gotten so small, just have great content out there, right? And most people, will, you know, most people who are terrific, who, who are good photographers, know a friend in Berlin or Paris. So you could probably stay with somebody, right? And so you're on the phone and well, you know, we're in New York, we don't have a big budget, no problem. I have a friend who lives in the city. I, you know, I have a place to stay. Got it. You know, you gotta be cagey. You gotta be able to, you know, figure things out. Got it. So it's a, it's a, um, so you should be smart as a photographer. You should be smart. No, no. You gotta be. Yeah, you gotta be, especially in this world with lots of, lots of great, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm always telling to the young photographers that there are lots of people out there that you should know them and you should think about them because you, this is going to be, I, I don't want to use this word, but this is going to be a fight. I mean, totally. Yeah, it, it is. It, 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 and, it's a competitive yeah, world. Yes. So, and um, it's it, especially in this digital, digital world. So everybody can uh, make some content. So I'm going to go with, the, with another question. So um, Frank, can you give us a little perspective into the, uh, the art of handling rejections? I mean, young photographers should, I mean, get disappointed very soon. They say, okay, I, I just sent 10 emails, 20 emails to the reps and the ad agencies. Uh, they don't like my work. So what, what, what do I need to do this? So, so can, you, can you give us some, some ideas and perspective about this attitude? This is why psychiatrists make so much money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, listen, rejection is, is part, of, part of life. I mean, we have it with our girlfriends and our boyfriends, right? I mean, you grow up, the first thing your mother and father say is no, right? I mean, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's the same thing in business, you know, it's if you need to develop thick skin and I have to tell you, we've done a, a zillion jobs. And if I had a nickel for every time somebody said to us, Oh, we can't work with you again. I can't wait to work with you again. It's going to be great. We're going to do all these jobs together and never to ever hear from them again. I'd be a millionaire. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, that's just, you know, it are, are people bullshitting or are people just giving you the easy answer? You know, who knows? It, 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 it's all those other things we spoke about. Competition. Are you staying? Are you staying on those people's minds? I cannot tell you. And this is something that bugs, bugs me beyond belief is that people get jobs and they never follow up with their clients. Got it. You know, that's why you have rejection is because you just did a, a nice shoot. You made a good fee and you never found out the person's birthday. You never found out that they're having a baby. You never found out that there's an anniversary. You never found out anything about them. So you get the job and that's it. You didn't take them to lunch. You didn't take them out for drinks. You know, you talk about networking and building relationships. That's how it's done. I mean, you know, you didn't go to Facebook and see that today is their birthday. You know, send them, you know, a pound of jelly beans. 
right? Just for fun, just for stinking fun. Oh, that's such a nice thing that Ollie would do. You know, I mean that, and, and you should do that all the time. Or you notice, like you, know, you just got a job and the fee was $5,000, right? And you know, you remember when they looked at your website, the, this woman was crazy about that particular shot. Make a 16 by 20 print, sign it and send it to her. How much does the print cost? Nothing, probably nothing. Less than lunch. Less than lunch, you're right. You're right. And nobody does it. But the effect, hey. but the effect of the, what you're doing to the mind of that person may, might make, uh, gonna be last forever, so. Absolutely, and you know, and, and the dream is, you know that they love that photograph. So it's not like you're sending them a photograph of your ugly face. You're sending them a photo of a beautiful landscape in the desert of, of you know, of Iran, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make any sense not to do it. And that's one of those things that should become part of every photographer's workflow, right? When you do a shoot, you come back to your office and the first thing you do is you clean your equipment so that if you need to shoot tomorrow, you're out and you're running and you're ready to go. So the equipment's all clean. <clears throat> the same thing. You do a job, you come back, and you make a note. She noticed this photograph, make a print. By next week, that print should be made, signed, and sent out as, as a lock, like w without, like you clean in your cameras, same thing. Have, you know, and if you know that everyone likes it, make six at a time. So you have the prints. You have your cardboard, you have your envelopes, and done, right? That should be part of your workflow all the time. Even if you have a great appointment, right? You have a great appointment and someone gave you terrific advice. Acknowledge it, right? You had a great portfolio review, right? And this person was really helpful, gave you a couple of names and contacts. And you saw when they went through uh, your portfolio or the website, they really, you know, she really loved or he really loved the shot of a rubber duck. Make a print. It doesn't have to be 16, 20. It could be, you know, four by five. A nice, you know, nice paper. I mean, four by five inches because some people think about centimeters. So you're talking yeah. about inches. Yeah, just something really nice. Hey, thanks for your time. It says so much about you. Instead of, I mean, just think of all the people you meet and those relationships just go away. They go away. I mean, how fucked up is that? Right. That it, it, it's just, you know, like, wow, that was great. Never to hear from them again. It's interesting because I can give you an example. So but every time I make a connection, so definitely. Um, so uh, and I learned it. I, I knew it lots. Uh, even when I started as a young uh, teacher when I was 20. So I knew that, OK, I have um, um, a supervisor, so I need to take care of them. So, I mean, uh, say a birthday wishes, or as you said, so, and, and keep Something. that relation, not just because, not just because you want to work with them and make money because you want the, you need that relation, uh, for, for advice, forward. right. For, for advice, for, for your spiritual well being. you know, it could, it could be your, a writer. It doesn't have to always be an art director. It could be a writer like that was really, you know, thanks a lot. I mean, I get that so much. You know, people send me, because everyone knows that I love chocolate licorice. That, that's my thing. So, you know, I get that all the time, you know, and, and it's fun, right? But, you know, or, or, or I'll do for, you know, th there was a woman, uh, Beverly Adler, worked at Ogilvy and Mather. And she, you know, you come into her office and she would have snow globes. You know what a snow globe is, Ali? Yeah. Fact, you know, it, it's a little bowl and you shake it up. Yes, right? yes just, I know. So by the time, like, I would see her and I would go somewhere and I, you know, I'd go to Paris and I would buy one for two bucks, three dollars, right? And, yeah. you, and, you'd, and you'd give it to her. And then but the next time I went to her office, she had 20, she had 50, she had like 300 snow globes. Everyone was getting her snow globes, <laughs> right? I mean, because we knew that that's what Beverly loved, right? And, the, and it was just, you know, it's fun. Right. Yeah. Even, if you, even if you don't work with her again, you know, you're part of this community. And yes. to this day, when I see Beverly, it's like seeing, you know, a sister I haven't seen. She's a wonderful lady. I haven't worked with her in years, but she is so nice. 
and that I mean, that, and that's part of your community, right? Um, you, you, you know, you'd love that. Okay, great. So, Frank, um, um, I have another question. So, is it possible for an agent to? Uh, so, is it is this is this a routine? I, I'm not sure. So, is is it routine, or is it possible for an agent to uh, offer photographers to ad agencies directly? I mean, even even if they don't reach you. I mean, even uh, imagine that Ogilvy and Mather didn't reach you, and you you just call them and send them an email. Hey, I just have this. Uh, great photographer said that you might want to see his website or her website. Well, that, that's exactly the way it works. If you're, if you're representing somebody, you want to be on the phone or emailing saying, you know, Cindy Rivet, who's at Ogilvy. Cindy, I now represent Sally Sue. Can you take a look at her website? You have a link there. And you send, because what, you, what you're trying to do is plant seeds, you know, all over the place so that all right, everyone knows that now you represent Sally Sue. And the next time a, um, a lifestyle job comes up, they're thinking Frank Rep Sally Sue, and that, that's what you're doing. So you're constantly planting, planting seeds. Oh, I got it. So um, um, we talked about the importance of websites. And uh, Frank, one question. Do they need, I mean, do the photographers need, do, need to categorize their portfolio? Um. It, you know, it really depends upon the market you're in. Okay. You're in a market like New York, being that there are so many photographers, you cannot be, I mean, you, you can be anything, but you cannot really be all over the place. That you do lifestyle, you do fashion, you do portraits, you do still life. Now, if you do everything so impeccable and you have such a distinctive style, that's something else. But if somebody's looking for portraits, they don't want to go to somebody, somebody's site and see portraits, lifestyle, fashion, still life. They want to see that all you do is portraits. Now, if you are that guy in Atlanta or Chattanooga where you really are a terrific photographer, you can then do that because you become a resource for Atlanta. In New York, it's different. Chicago, it's different. L.A., it's different. Berlin, it's different. You know, it's just a different animal because there's just so many more photographers. But in these smaller big cities like a Boston, you know, um, like, you know, just pick, pick a city, Cleveland, Ohio or Cincinnati. You know, you can you can be more of a jack of all trades because the market is smaller and and they'll know that, you know, Joe Michael or Rebecca, Rebecca, who works out of uh, Ohio, is a terrific photographer and we need a still life job. You know, we need a product shot done. She can do it even though she really, her main focus is lifestyle, right? But it's a small market. That doesn't, generally, that doesn't happen in the bigger cities because if they need a fashion photographer, bam, they're going, they're, they're looking through their list of fashion photographers. Still life, same thing. They're not looking at a fashion photographer who maybe does still life. They're looking for still life shooters. Got it. So it's it's a diff two different worlds there. So it's a two yeah. So I, I I because sometimes you see photographers who put everything on the website or when you go into the Instagram. So you see they have portraits, fashion. I mean not fashion portraits, landscape, streets. If if their style it is kills definitive, them. if their style is definitive enough, then it works. But okay, it really has, it. it has to be something so different, like this guy, Chip Simmons. You, 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 you go look at his work. He shoots in a way that you would only call him because you want that work. And that's really a good place to be because you have your style. Now, you may not like that style. I may not like it, but I know what he does. And that is probably the most important thing I can say here today is that people know your style, right? Because there are, there are less jobs but I know that photographer X shoots this way and it's in my head. That's great. I may not use him ever, but I know what he does. And that's really, that's really a, a big piece of photographers starting out is having the style and letting people know this is what I do. Got it. So, um, um, Frank, one, one question. So, um, let's, let's be, in this part of a job, I mean, let's, let's talk about uh, how to be an agent. So how, how did you become an agent? I mean, imagine that some right now, somebody is in our audience that they want to know how they can become an agent or rep. Yeah. I mean, 
For me, I, I started, uh, I worked at an ad agency. Okay. And um, just a little bit of a background story. I worked for this ad agency. I was the projectionist. Great, great ad agency, Ali and Gargano. Okay. And they almost forced us to buy stock in this company called MCI. It was a phone company at the time. And, you know, so I did, and I had $3,000. And in, in like a year and a half, it, it turned into like $70,000. And so now I'm 25. I got $70,000 in the bank. What, you know, what am I doing? Right. What, why am I here? I can retire now. Right. When, when you're that age. So and that's it. Yeah. I quit. And I, um, I traveled through Europe for a year in the Middle East. And I came back and someone said, you should be a rep. You're really good with people. You're easy. And I tell you, Ali, I never imagined I'd ever be a rep, like the last thing in the world. And I did, and um, I was really dedicated. And, you know, early on it wasn't so successful, but then, you know, you got a better photographer and another better photographer, people like Robert Amirati and James Salzano. And then all of a sudden, all that hard work that I had put in making connections, now I had terrific photographers. And I'll never forget the first time an ad agency called me. I mean, it was like magic. It was for Robert Amirati from a co company Y&R. They called, you know, we'd like to see Robert's book. Man, just that they called was like the second coming of Christ. You know, like, wow, right? Like we had finally broken through, you know, th that, that kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, if you want to be a rep, it's really, it's really a low-cost way to get into business. You don't need, you know, you don't, all you need is your computer and you're, and you're a rep. Right. And now all the hard work comes. Um, so it, to be a rep, you've got to enjoy people. People have to enjoy you. You have to have good people that you're representing. And it's something I, I tell my kids all the time. Be interested. Be interesting. No matter what business you're in. If you do those two things, people will gravitate to you. Right. I mean, and I, cer I certainly don't have all the answers to, to a lot of things. But um, I'm interested. I want to know, you know, and, and that sort of just, you know, dovetails into, you know, this is the world, you know, and, and tell me more, you know, t tell me this, tell me that. And um, so it, it was always, it was, I always say, I never worked a day in my life. I really never did. This was always so much fun for me. And, and in between there, there are hills and valleys. And there's, yes. a lot of, yes. and there's a lot of shitheads you know, all over the place, but there's a lot of great, great people that you meet in our business. That is, is an absolute gift, an absolute gift. So yeah, for, for me, it was always, it was always, you know, good. It was always good, rewarding, hard work. And you, you know, you got that. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> it's good to hear. And I know, I know, and everybody knows, I think it's so much tough it is so tough to be, I mean, uh, and all the, all the uh, discussion that we had and we have right now all the time, it goes back to the hard work, hard work, hard work. Man. For everybody, the photographers, the reps, the assistants, the stylists, the clients, you know, none, none, you know, none of it's, uh, none of it's easy. You know, it's just, you got to be dedicated. You know, yes, you got to be, be dedicated. You got to be dedicated. So um, it's interesting. I have some questions uh, that people wrote right now. And uh, the, the point is, uh, in the Instagram live, I think there's a bug. I'm not sure, guys. But the, the last time that I was talking with Eric Johnson, when I, when I run the questions, so Instagram cut off uh, the live uh, talk. So... I'm going to click on it, but if it doesn't work, so we are going back. I mean, if, if, in, if it interrupts our conversation, so I'm going to go back again. So I'm not sure. Let's see if this bug resolved or, uh, okay. So Frank, the first question, who are Frank's favorite photographers? The most inspiring ones. Um, Frank, I, you know, it should be a very short answers because we have only six minutes. Okay. So, I mean, Dorothea Lang, um, Robert Amirati, Avedon, Salzano, Ali. You know, it, 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 it's, hard, it, it's hard to say one, Ron Haviv, 
you know, Ron Levine, you know, like for me, it's more about imagery that I see that inspires me. And I, I really gravitate a lot towards photojournalism. You know, I, I can remember certain photographs, you know, the, the photo, I don't know, for, the, for your, for your um, universe, the Iranians, we have this great photograph of um, the Kent State, you know, what happened at Kent State shooting at a college campus. Okay. Uh, you know, just different images that sort of are seared in your brain that, you know, like you want to know how did that happen? You know, how did this happen? Those, those types of photographs. Okay, so good. It, less about the photograph, more less about the pho photographers and more about the imageries that inspire. Okay, one other question. Frank, uh, they say, is LinkedIn a good platform to promote your work? Which LinkedIn? Yes. Yeah, LinkedIn is great from a business standpoint, you know, where you can connect with an art director, you can connect with a client, right? But just have something to really connect about. Like don't connect just for connecting, connect with a marketing director of this company for this reason. And, and connect, you know, I know that you're the marketing director of this. Can you please take a look at my site? Something like that. Okay. I love uh, LinkedIn. Okay, so uh, yeah, there was other people who asked about the LinkedIn. Uh, there was another question about the, uh, because some of them are, let's, let's see. Um, so and, we and talk. Are these mostly, are these mostly uh, Iranians or people from the States? I mean, it's a mix, Frank. <clears throat> okay. When you, see that I'm pause, when you see that I'm pausing because it's Persian, so right. I'm, okay. I'm going to translate it. But it's, it's a mix. Uh, and, and there are lots of, and there are some questions that we just answered them. Imagine uh, there was a question. This is a question about how can we start and find an employer? So we, we talked about it. So, or there's another question, um, how to make contacts and how to start making them. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we talked about them. And, yeah. um, and the uh, relationship of the agencies and the photographers, we talked about them. And there's another question... Um, Let's say, let me, let me find it. Um, uh, so there's a, there's a guy who asked, so how did you get the, uh, I mean, how did you see the photograph? I mean, how, how do you find the photographers and see their photographs? You said they contact you or you see the websites, right? Yeah, you know, you, you see who wins awards, who's doing great editorial work for Vogue or, or um, you know, who knows, any magazine or, or the newspapers, um, Instagram, you know, it's, there's so many different places to hit. Okay, so, um, but you gotta I think, uh, Frank, I, I asked lots of questions. I mean, there's a lot to say, a lot to talk. And I think we can do this talk in the conversation again in the future, which I believe that everybody is going to love to hear from you. So we have only one minute and 30 seconds. So would you please give us some piece of advice to young photographers? Very short. Yeah, just, just keep on shooting. Be dedicated to what you do. Be respectful to, um, to the craft that you've mastered and just keep on shooting. Be dedicated, you know, rain or cold weather, nothing should get in the way of taking your camera and going and shooting. Even if, if it turns out bad, you, you're going to learn something. Just keep on shooting. Build relationships. You know, whether build, build relationships. And remember, everything you do, it follows you. If you're a decent person, that follows you. If you're a shithead, that follows you. You know, all of that. It's really, really important. And, and, and this world is so stinking small. When people know that you're a terrific person, terrific human being, everyone knows. And but and and the, the flip side of that is you know if you're a shithead, everyone's gonna find that out fast. You know, <laughs> be decent. Be you know it's life. It's you know just it's, keep on shooting. It's life. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, Frank. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It was an honor for me to have you as one of my guests. No. Anytime we do it again. Yes, and definitely we will do it again. So um, I wish you nothing but health and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Frank. Okay. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye everyone.